Welcome to YouTube Excel Magic Tricks. Hey, this is part two of the beauty of Excel. Hey, we were in the middle of creating a bunch of sales analysis with formulas. If I scroll over here, were our assumptions and inputs. We made a little income statement. Now we're ana analyzing sales. We have our units, and remember these units, these are labels that all these formulas here we use, and they're based on formulas. This revenue, variable cost, all based on our assumption numbers. Hey, let's calculate our contribution uh, margin. We were kind of cut off in the last, last one, so I'll do it again. Equals, oh yeah, whatever our revenue is minus our variable cost. Contribution margin means how much is left over to... Uh, pay fixed cost. Control enter. That's a relative cell reference that's always going to look two to my left and subtract one to my left. So when I double click the fill handle and send it down, when I go down to the last one and click F2, that puts it into edit mode. Boom! You can see the formula work. Two to my left minus one to my left. Escape. Now let's go do fixed costs. Fixed costs. Well, those are the same for every single um, possible. Uh, units sold. So we're going to click in cell H2 and say equals. I'm going to scroll over and get my fixed costs, which are in B14. B14. Oh, but I need that locked when I'm copying it down. So I'm going to hit my F4 key once and twice. That dollar sign in front of the number means row reference. So when I'm copying down across the rows, it's locked. Control Enter. I'm going to double click my fill handle with my angry rabbit and send it down. Oh, that is so magic. Hey, let's do our net income formula. But instead of putting it in one cell and double click and send it down, highlight the whole range first. Whoa, that jumped way over there. There's the whole range. And now my formula is going to be in the white cell at the top. Equals two cells to the left minus one cell to the left. That formula with relative cell references will work all the way down. So since we highlighted the range first, now we can hold Control and tap Enter. That tells Excel to populate all those highlighted cells with the formula. You can see we have a bunch of losses there, and then not, on, not until uh, 5,000 units do we start to make a uh, little bit of a profit. Now, we're, for our chart, we're going to do uh, in just a couple moments, we need total cost. So I'm going to highlight that whole range. And in the white cell at the top, I'm going to say equals SUM, open parentheses. I'm going to click on variable costs. And then I'm going to hold the control key, which allows me to select areas that are not right next to each other, non-contiguous ranges. And then I'm going to click on fixed costs. That's it. Close parentheses. That formula will work all the way down. Please add the two, four to my left and two to my left. Control Enter. You don't believe it? Click in the last cell down below and hit F2. No way. The blue one and the green one are four to my left and two to my left. Now, we have all of our formulas here for our sales analysis. And we have two last things to do. We've d we have our assumption area. We have our income statement. We have some sale analysis. The last two things we want to do is we want to automatically add a little um, row of color like that every single time we change this input number. So we're going to use conditional formatting. And once we do that, then we'll make a chart. Control Z to get rid of that. Now, here's the trick to conditional formatting. I'm going to highlight the whole table, even though it's off the screen a little bit, I have the whole table highlighted. And the key to this is to highlight the top corner cell in white first and then drag down. That top white corner will be important for conditional formatting. Now, the keyboard shortcut in both 2007 and 2003 for conditional formatting is Alt-O-D. Now, you see a different dialog box in 2003. You don't have to click this, but we do we have to click New Rule. And then we have to click Use Formula. And there it is. There's a place for formula. In 2003, you click the little drop down. It's the very first text box. And click Formula Is. All right, now our formula, we got to think about this. This is conditional formatting. Even though we're going to enter the formula in our dialog box here, it actually gets stored in memory and it gets copied down and over just like any other formula. So here, we got to think about this. We want the formula that's going to be a true or false formula to copy down. But when it hits our 5,000 right there, it's going to be, we want our formula to look there and there and say, are these equal? So when we copy down, 
let's just go ahead and start it. Let's click in the white cell, boom, and you see the formula starts to emerge there. But we don't want both dollar signs, because when we copy it down, we want it to move relatively. So when it sees for the row, the units that are equal to there, it will uh, know that they're equal. But when we copy it across the columns, we want it locked. So we want the whole row formatted. So guess what? This formula, you need to hit F4, F4 twice, so that the dollar sign is just in front of the row. Then we're going to say equals, and click on this units in the assumption table. And here we want both locked, because when we copy it down, we want the first part to move relatively. So when it sees that, it says, OK, yes, that's true. And then when we copy this little first part over here, we want it locked. But this B11, sorry, it's locked when you're going down and over. That's the formula that will work. Now, let's click on the format. And let's click a format. I'm going to click on the fill in 2003. This says patterns. I'm going to click a color. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to click OK. Now, let's see if that works. Let's change this to 6,000. Oh, that is so magic. Everything updated. Everything in the income statement, all the numbers here. I mean, the, the, none of the numbers there changed because we it just changed the formatting. If we were to change this price per unit to 35 and hit Enter, then all the numbers here change, all the numbers here change. But the conditional format doesn't because we didn't change that. I'm going to Control Z, Z twice. And now our last little step is to build a chart. Now I'm going to highlight units and revenues, and we're going to have to build an XY scatter diagram with a line. Not the line chart, but the X, XY scatter. Units are going to be X, and revenues are going to be Y. In 2007, you have to go to Insert Ribbon and click on Scatter. In 2003, you click on the Chart Wizard, and in step one, you click Scatter. I'm going to click this one right here for Scatter with Straight Line. And there it is. We can see, if I click and drag this up here, we have our revenues. Now we need to add total costs and fixed costs. Now let's add fixed costs first. In 2003, you need to click on the Chart Wizard button. Once you have your chart, and go to Step 2 and um, add data there. For us, we're going to have to go up to the Context Sensitive Ribbon Design, Chart Tools Design, boop, and select Data. Now we want to add, so we're going to click Add. And what do we want to add? I'm actually going to click on Fixed Cost for the name. And the X's are going to be all of the units. Now watch this. I can't really see the right cell to click on, so I'm going to click on D1 and then hit my down arrow. Watch what happens right here when I hit my down arrow. It goes to D2, which is the first units. And since I can't highlight all this, I'm going to hold Control and Shift and down arrow. No way. That's such a cool keyboard shortcut that helps me in charting. Then I'm going to come down to these um, Y values. And I want to delete that equals array 1. It's got to be deleted. And then I'm going to come over to variable cost. Um, no, no, this is uh, fixed cost. So I'm going to click right there in H2, H2 and hit Control Shift down arrow to highlight it. And then click OK. And then click OK. You can see our chart starting to emerge. Ooh, there's the fixed cost. That's at the point where our sales are above fixed cost. We need one more line, which is total total costs. There they are over there. I'm going to click on the edge of the chart and go to Design, and then Select Data, and Add. The series names, it's total cost. The X values, ooh, I need to get somehow over to that those labels. I'm going to click in something I can see and use my arrow key to get over to Units, and then Down one. You could see it's kind of flashing there, and I don't want to highlight with my cursor, so I'm going to hold Control, Shift, and Down arrow. I love those keyboard shortcuts. They're so helpful. Go to the Ys. Delete all that junk right there. Be sure to delete it, because if you leave it there, it'll mess it up. And then we need to go find Total Cost. I'm going to click in the top one. Control Shift Down Arrow. It's got the right ones. Click OK, click OK. There it is. Fixed cost, variable cost, sales analysis. Now here's the beauty of Excel. We change, and I'll have to make this pretty small here. You change one little input, change this to 7,000. 
boom, change the unit price to $20. Watch how dramatically this changes. Ooh, click the variable cost. It's really 10. So I have unit sold 7,000, price 20, variable cost 10. That is the beauty of Excel.